Hello and welcome to this Astranti video on zero-based budgeting, which is a budgeting method whereby every item of expenditure has to be justified before being included in the budget, but more on that in a second. It's super important that you know about zero-based budgeting, as it's something you may be examined on in either your P1 or your BA2 exam. The following video is an extract from our full P1 course video, if you'd like to see the full video, you can purchase it on the Astranti website as part of our full course. So let's get to it and take a look at zero-based budgeting. We're going to assume that we've been paid £1,000 and in the last few months we've been using an incremental system. We've just been assuming that our expenses are £600, assuming that we can save £200 and assuming that we need £200 in disposable income. But this time, we have really broken down our expenses and broken down our income. And uh, we looked at our disposable income and thought, well, hang about. We're spending £100 a month on takeaway food when we've got plenty of food in the house at the moment. We're trying to save for a holiday. Why are we spending this much money on takeaway food? We cannot justify that. So what we're going to do is we're going to deduct £100 from our disposable income budget and put it into our savings. So we're saving £100 more. We're now actually looking at our expenditure, looking at whether or not it can be justified and then adapting our budget based on it. And that's what zero-based budgeting is. It's where you assume that all budgets start at absolute zero and before any item can be included, it must be justified. So we start perhaps with zero for expenses and zero for saving and zero for disposable income. And we have to justify our expenses. So we've got £400 in a mortgage. Do we have to pay our mortgage? Yes, that's justified. OK, £400 goes into expenses. We've got car payments of £200. Can that be justified? Yes, it can. £200 in car payments goes into expenses. That's our £600 in expenses justified. But by using this method, we identified that we were spending £100 on takeaway food. That could not be justified. Therefore, it does not go into the budget. And it's a really useful way of really breaking down the cause of costs and where costs are being accumulated and allocating resources more efficiently based on that. And the method of doing zero-based budgeting is as follows. It starts with every single item being prepared and being proposed. And that's known as a decision package. Essentially, a particular activity needs to be brought forward to the budget setters, usually by a manager, and it will have all the benefits of it, the resources required for it, etc. And this committee reviews the decision package alongside other decisions, packages that have been presented with, and it will rank and prioritize those. So let's say that particular activity has a far higher contribution than another, it's going to be ranked ahead of it because it provides more contribution to the organization. Or perhaps one of them is far more in line with the goals and objectives of the company than another. In that case, it's going to be prioritized ahead of it again. And once all of these different decision packages have been prioritized, then the funds, the resources can be allocated fairly based on those rankings. So when would an organization use zero-based budgeting? Well, it's far more useful for organizations with a lot of discretionary spending. For example, you may have a public body that receives a fixed amount of income from the government every single year. Now, they can't use incremental budgeting because the money that they received is the same as last year. They can't just do everything that they did last year. What they have to do is then look at the money that they have, look at the various different projects available and make the most efficient use of that money by selecting the most efficient, most cost effective products. However, it's not useful in organizations with very high manufacturing costs. 
if you are a company where the majority, if not all of your expenditure is simply in material and labor, and you have to use that labor, use those materials to create your products, you can't really turn around and say, well, can we justify spending money on materials to create this product? I mean, is it really justifiable? Yes, we need car tires for our cars, but do we really need tires? Can't we just make a car without tires? It doesn't really work like that. And that's why zero-based budgeting is best used in organizations with a lot of discretionary spending. You can really pick and choose between the things that you need to spend money on and the things you don't need to spend money on. So another good example would be in research facilities. And it's useful for companies because it does identify those inefficiencies. If you have to justify why you need a certain amount of resource, then you are going to have to make sure that you definitely need money for that resource. There's no turning around and saying, well, we've always spent £600 on this particular expense, so let's just keep on doing it. You need to ask the question, why do we need to spend £600 on this particular resource? And in a zero-based budgeting system, you do have to justify it because you're only going to be given the funds if there is a clear benefit for doing so. And this also encourages a focus on long-term goals because you're more likely to receive a particular amount of funding, particular resource, if you can justify that it's in the business's best interest. Also, it ensures that resources are effectively allocated. Ensure that the organization is not wasting its money. That's the primary purpose of zero-based budgeting because if funds only allocated, if the benefit is clear, then inefficiencies will be removed. But on the downside, zero-based budgeting is quite time consuming and it's very expensive. Lots of managers have to spend a lot of time analyzing every single thing that they do and then putting it into a proposal and then passing that proposal on to the decision makers who ultimately are individuals. So they're going to be choosing it based on their own personal opinions as well. The ranking is very subjective. And also, whilst the purpose of zero-based budgeting is also to encourage longer-term goals and adherence to long-term goals, it can also, on the flip side, promote short-term thinking. The reason why is because in order to get a high ranking in the decision-making process, the more benefit that you can demonstrate, the more likely you are to appear high in that rank and the more likely you are to be given funds, which means short-term profit-making might be looked at more favorably than long-term benefits because you're just trying to get the profit in in the short term, trying to justify you're spending by getting the profit in in the short term. So that's another disadvantage. So that brings us to the end of this video and you should now have a much better grasp on the concept of zero-based budgeting. But you've got to remember this was just a very short extract and there's a lot more you need to know for your exams. And as we said earlier, you can find the full video on the Astranti website as part of our full course, where you'll also be able to find other videos, study texts, mocks, exam practice kits and revision notes. Just by simply signing up to our website you can sample some of these products completely for free. If you enjoyed this video check out our other socials on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn and of course subscribe to our YouTube channel where we upload new videos twice a week. Thanks so much for watching and see you again soon.